So welcome to this. This is the Further Math Support Programme online revision session for AQA Statistics 1. And in this session we're going to be looking at concepts of probability. So there are three major steps that we need to consider um, which extend from GCSE. Uh, one is to understand and use addition laws when we're dealing with mutually exclusive events. The other one is to understand and use the multiplication laws when we're dealing with um, independent events and also if they're not independent events um, and also we're looking at the situations that underpin the idea of conditional probability uh, and of course we're looking also at how we can apply these to the various situations at hand. So, straight in with some questions. Each school day morning, three students, Rita, Saeed and Ting, travel independently from home to the same school by one of three modes, either walking, cycling or bus. And the table below shows the probabilities of their independent daily choices. So they're kind of stressing the word independent here. So what one of them does is uh, not affected by um, what the other students do. So, calculate the probability that on any given school day morning all three students walk. So what we're doing here is we're picking up Rita walking, Saeed walking, and whoops, Saeed walking, <laughs> and Ting walking. Okay, so I'll mark those in red splodges. So to do this, because they're independent, we can apply the multiplication rule here. So we're going to have it's Rita walking and Saeed walking and Ting walking. Okay, and that's going to give me a value either as a fraction or as a decimal of 0 0.065. So you get a method mark here for indicating that we're multiplying the independent events together. And we are also getting an accuracy mark for getting 0 0.065. So for the second part of the question, I'll change colour. Only Rita travels by bus to school. Okay, so for Rita to travel by bus is going to be 0 0.25. Now, what do the others need to do? Well, if it's only Rita travelling to school by bus, then the others can't. So there's two ways of doing this. Saeed must be 1 minus 0 0.15 because his probability of going by bus is 0.15 and Ting will be 1 minus 0 0.20. Okay, and again we're going to get a method mark for the process and then we're going to get an accuracy mark for multiplying those correctly. Okay, so not the complement, don't forget, is 1 minus the probability that it does. And then for part 3, this is a bit more complicated, but at least two of the three students cycle to school. Okay, so really here we need to split this into two situations. Either two of them cycle, or three of them cycle. Now the key thing here is that because they're mutually exclusive, you can't both have these at the same time. We're going to end up adding these probabilities together. So just by writing what I've written, we'll actually trigger a method mark in this question, which is really nice. So now let's look at this. Two of them cycle, so either Rita and Saeed cycle, or Rita and Ting cycle, or Saeed and Ting cycle. So those are the three outcomes that we could have. So if we consider Rita and Saeed, that's going to be 0 0.1 times by 0 0.45 or so we can have an add there it's Rita and Ting, so that's 0 0.1 times by 0 0.55 or those with triangles, it's going to be Saeed whoops, and Ting. Okay, and if we do all of those, that's going to give me 0 0.22275. Okay, so now all three cycle. So that's okay, because all three cycle is just going to be the product of all three. All three of those multiplied together. So that's going to give me 0.1. 0.45.55 and that's going to give me a value of 0 0.02475. Okay, so now what I have 
is a B mark for the correct calculation for two cycles, a B mark for the correct calculation for three cyclists, and then by adding them together I create my method mark, and then quoting the correct answer will give me 0.298. There are other ways of doing this. Uh, you could consider no cyclists and one cyclist and then subtract from one. That will give you the same idea, but that's kind of the process I want here. Okay, so Ursula is a friend of Rita's and she never travels to school by bus. The probability that Ursula walks to school when Rita walks to school is 0.9. Ah, okay. And Ursula cycles to school when Rita cycles is 0.7. So here we have some ideas of conditional probability. Now, it's quite sensible here, I think, to draw a tree because there's a condition. There's a condition on Rita. Okay. So let's. Well, we don't really need a tree diagram, but let's let's consider the maths here. So the same method. So what is the same method? Well, either they both walk, or they both cycle. So let's consider what's going on. If they both walk, well, that means Rita's got to walk and Ursula will walk. Okay, or CC, so that's cycle. Rita cycles is 0.1. If Rita cycles, then Ursula cycles is 0.7. So again, we just simply need to add those two items together. So let's work them out. It's going to be 0.585 plus 0.070 which is going to give me uh, 0.655. Okay, and again, this is going to be worth three marks, so let's see how the marks are allocated. You're going to get a method mark, uh, sorry, a B mark, for assigning each probability. Again, a method mark for adding them together, and an accuracy mark for getting the correct value. Then, if they're different, well, it's basically not what we've just done. So again, we can apply the idea of... Um, absolute opposites, 1 minus all the complementary probability, 1 minus 0 0.6555. And again, this will be a follow-through. It's only worth one mark, but it'll be a follow-through. So if you did mess up the previous bit, at least you'll still get some credit in the second part of the question. Okay, so this is um, about application. Emma visited her local supermarket every Thursday to do her weekly shopping. The event that she buys orange juice is denoted by J. Now, while reading this question, whoops, oh, I think it's always a good idea just to under underline things as we go along. Let's do that again. So orange juice, orange juice denoted by J. Okay. And the event that she buys bottled water is denoted by W. So I think it's always a good idea just to um, annotate those. Excuse me one second. Okay, water is at denoted by W. Okay, so hence or otherwise, find the probability. Let's go back to the original question. At each visit, Emma may buy neither or one or both of these items. Complete the table of probabilities printed below where J prime and W prime denote the events not J and not W. So here we go. So W prime is going to be 0.15. J prime, we're told the total is 0.3. So this is a simple two-way table. So that's going to be 0.7 because these have to add up to 1. This is going to be 0 0.35 because they have to add up to 1. And then everything else is just filling in the ideas. It's sort of like a Venn diagram but done in a tabular form. But it really is just a two-way table. Okay, so that's not so bad for three marks. Okay, and that'll indicate where your B marks come. You get a B mark for writing the 0 0.35 and the 0 0.7, so the obvious fillings in. Okay, uh, you then get another B mark for calculating the 0 0.55, and then you get another B mark for both of these being correct. So, th the way you would expect to fill in uh, a probability table. Okay, so, we've now got to look at the situation of hence or otherwise find the probability that Emma buys either orange juice or bottled water, but not both.
Okay, so we need to understand what this is saying. So this is So I lost my pen. Hence, otherwise, find the probability that on any given Thursday. So this is going to purchase exactly one, is what we're looking at here. So either she's going to purchase water and not juice, or she's going to purchase not juice and water. Uh, sorry, not water and juice. So these come straight from the two-way table that we've just done. So the water and not juice is going to correspond to 0 0.1. Not water and juice is going to correspond to the 0 0.15 from the table. And again, we would follow through your 0 0.1 here. So if we add those together, that will give you 0 0.25. So how are the marks allocated here? Well, you're going to get a method mark for understanding that you're adding those two situations together and an accuracy mark for getting the correct answer. Right, so we've then got to show two conditions. We've got to show that J and W are not mutually exclusive. So what this means is, if they're not mutually exclusive, we've got to show that PJ plus PW does not equal PJ or W. Simply just adding those together is not going to work. So let's consider this first of all. So for part A, uh, PJ or W. We can work that out um, as being the following. One way of thinking about this is it's 1 minus the probability of not J and W. So that's going to give me 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. Now, if we consider the probability of J, the probability of J is 0 0.7. If we consider the probability of W, that's going to be 0 0.65. Clearly, we can see that that doesn't work. Okay, so we know that they're not mutually exclusive. Okay, so therefore, P, J, union W does not equal P, J uh, plus P, W. Okay, and then for the second section, let me change colour. For the second section, B, they're not independent. So, independency, what we need to show is the probability that W times by the probability of J does not equal, because we're looking for not independent, the probability of W and J. So again, it's not good enough just to state this, we need to actually work them out. So the probability of W and J from the tables um, was 0 0.55. Uh, and again, we're going to have 0 0.7 times by 0 0.65. And if we multiply those two things together, that's going to give me 0 0.45-ish, which we can see is not equal to 0.55, so therefore not independent. Okay, so let's look at how the marks are allocated here. So for A, this is only worth one mark, um, so basically we've got to see everything correct to get that. And then for part B, we've got a dependent mark, so you get one mark for working out the B at the 0.45, the 0.7 times 0.65, and then you get another B mark for stating it's not equal to 0.55, therefore not independent. And again, there are other ways of doing this, but any, any uh, that, that I think is the nicest way of doing it. Okay, so sorry about the scribble on this page. We'll just work through it. So, Reese visits the supermarket every Saturday to do his weekly shopping. Items may be bought are milk, cheese, and yogurt. And we're given the relative uh, we're given the probabilities of each. So the probability of milk, the probability of cheese, and the probability of yogurt and we're told that they are independent. So this is a very similar question to previously. And we've got to calculate that it buys none of the three items. So this is the probability of milk, not milk, not cheese, and not yoghurt. And because they're independent, we can simply just expand these as products. Because they're not, uh, because they are, sorry, independent. Okay, so for part one, we can calculate this, not M, which is 0.15, not cheese, and not yogurt. Okay, and by calculating all of those, again, we're going to get our value 0.027. So a method mark for understanding the multiplication, and then an accuracy mark for the correct answer. And then part two, exactly two of the three items. So this is the probability of two of the three items. So again, it's going to be, if we write out in full, let's consider M and C and not yoghurt, 
or m and not c and yogurt or not m c and yogurt and because they're all independent again we can multiply them out so 0 0.85 times by 0 0.6 times by 0 0.45 plus 0 0.85 times 0 0.4 times by 0 0.55 plus 0.15 times by 0 0.6 times by 0 0.55 and again if we work all those add them all together we get 0 0.466 so you're going to get two method marks okay your first method mark is for getting two of these three expressions correct your second method mark is for getting all of them correct and adding them and your final mark is clearly for your accuracy